Olivia. Okay. okay, can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Well, welcome everybody. It's so great to see you all today uh, in person and on Zoom. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Christy Simon, the President and CEO of the Central Maryland Chamber. And we're excited that you're joining us this morning for our webinar on federal government contracting. We're looking forward to a great program. So the Chamber has a series of educational events that have been recorded and they're accessible for free right on our website, which is centralmarylandchamber.org. While you're there, you can also sign up for our newsletter and follow us on social media for more information on the resources we offer and our other upcoming events. So if you could please take a moment to add your contact information in the chat box, then following the event, we will share that with all the attendees so you can stay in touch. And if you have questions throughout the program, you can also add those in the chat. We will have time for Q&A later in the event. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today's presentation. Gloria, L Gloria Larkin is the president and CEO of Target Gov. Target Gov celebrates its 25th anniversary in 2022 and focuses on government contracting, business development, recruiting, RFP, GSA support, and marketing services, including the exclusive federal acceleration strategies and tax tactics fast process the Kickstart program, capability statements, certification services, business development. Sorry about that. Oh, sorry, I lost my bio here. <laughs> um, no cap capability statements, certification services, business development, and expert federal contracting services, marketing communications, and calendar development and execution. She has created the Government Business Development Webinar Series, focusing on business development processes for the U.S. federal government, defense, and civilian agencies, producing over 300 webinars, videos, and podcasts. She has been recognized by Enterprising Women Magazine's 2010 Enterprising Women of the Year honoree, Women Impacting Public Policy, National Education Foundation past chair, and SBA's 2010 Women in Business Champion in Maryland. She has spoken at hundreds of national federal agency and business conferences, including the Department of Energy, Department of Veterans Affairs, the Social Security Administration, National Veterans Small Business Conference, National Women, Own Women Business Owners Corporation National Conference, and Johns Hopkins University Carey Business School Art of Entrepreneurship Annual Conference. So thank you so much for being with us today, Gloria. I'll turn it over to you. Christy, thank you very much. It's a delight to be here. And for everyone in the room, it's kind of interesting because the camera's right here. <laughs> so when you see me looking down as well as looking over, that's why I look like I'm just looking at this little white <laughs> device here in the center. And there is also a speaker right here as well. So please do know that we'd like you to ask questions during today's session, uh, feel free to do that um, as well. Do we have a chat function online, Kim, that we you'll do. be monitoring? Yeah. Perfect. You know, and thank you for the wonderful introduction. It was way too long. But what's most important, I think, is the second bullet, if you're looking at the screen. And that is that our clients have won over $8 billion in federal contracts in just the last few years. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are we celebrate when our clients win. It is uh, something that drives our existence. So what we will be talking about today is if you can go to the next slide for me, Kim, the agenda for today will focus on how to take advantage of what's in your backyard for the federal government marketplace. Everything from setting your company to be found and all of these acronyms and how to leverage. And what we're also going to do for those of you in the room, we are going to give a book away today. And, and I'm the author of the basic guide to government contracting. Yes, we have, we have a, this is going to be a, a nice take home, I think. I'll be happy to sign it for you. What we'll do is just ask you to pass your cards to 
there you go. <laughs> Pass your cards up to Matthew, and we'll be able to pick one at random uh, at the end of today. So the federal government marketplace is a, a unique marketplace, and I had a chance to chat with some of the folks who are here in person. If I may ask uh, for the young lady who just came in, tell us about your business. I am Alexis Lawson. I'm actually a partner of the uh, Central Maryland Chamber, and I do have something on the side, but my main reason to be here today is to just figure out how the businesses that I work with, um, how I can help them and be more helpful. Maybe I can offer information sessions. Very good. Uh, I'm at the Columbia Workforce Center. Oh, fabulous. Yes. yes. I'm a business service with near 10,000 businesses. Yes. Yes. Awesome. So any information that we can connect with and be able to help and put that information out for businesses and if that can benefit this whole region, I'm here. Oh, oh this is perfect because yeah. the workforce is so maximized in the federal government marketplace. You yes. know, all of the contractors, and we'll be talking in person to you today, as well as for those of you online who either are doing business currently or want to do more business in the federal government marketplace, how exactly that can get started. So let's roll into it. Let's go to the next slide, if you would, Kim. So the reason I put this slide up here is, let me explain what all of these beautiful colors are. The, these represent four quarters of the federal fiscal year. And today, for a live event, we are in the end of the fourth quarter, the one that is the highest in spending every year in the federal government marketplace and September 30th. So whether you're listening today live or you're listening to this as a recording, what you take away from this though is every single quarter of the year, the federal government spends over 20%. So it is always a marketplace for you whether you're offering financial services to the contractors themselves or to the government or hotel rooms for the contractors or the government personnel themselves. All year long, this is a very viable marketplace, meaning that you should market your company all year long before the bids and RFPs come out. Many people think that this is 100% just a bid and RFP market. You just see them advertised, you answer them, and if you're lucky, you win. Well, no, <laughs> that is not how you win successfully in the federal government marketplace. You want the government to know who you are ahead of time and they will be checking you out. So Kim, or let me see if I can, yes, I can go to the next slide, very good. When we say, what is your score? This is all about positioning your company to be the go-to company for the services that you're offering in the federal government marketplace before the RFP even is advertised. This is how you position to win early before other companies even know about the bid. And did I mention that we've helped companies win over $8 billion in federal government contracts? So what I'm talking about is based in reality. And you're not going to find what I'm telling you in the next few slides anywhere else but from us because we're giving you some inside information. So what do I mean about how does your company score? We are taking a look at SAM.gov as well as the SBA profile. And what I want you to think about is you want to score as high as possible. And when I talk about as high as possible, companies who grade A, who are scored A, clearly 
set themselves apart from competition. They are truly memorable in what they offer. And the government goes to them over and over and over again for ongoing contract opportunities. If you're scored B, you have a possible chance, but you're not memorable in the same way a company who is graded A. You see that red line? That is the red line of death. <laughs> <laughs> Because what I mean by that is anything under the red line, they do not win contracts. If you score a C, and many companies think, well, that's average. I'm, I'm okay with average. Average does not win contracts. In order to win contracts, you must be above that red line. D means you're on life support, and F means you're dead in the water. And how these scores come about is based on your mandated registration, SAM.gov, SAM.gov. Now, I know that many companies are already registered in SAM and they say, Gloria, I already know about that. We're already there. Let's let's cut to the chase. Well, I have something very unique to share with you today. And what that is, is that the government is now using data scraping tools and artificial intelligence to find the companies who provide hotel services, to find the companies that pro provide IT services, or financial services, or construction services, or engineering services. So instead of posting RFPs as much as they used to, they are now finding the handful of companies who are located where they need, who can do what they can do, and then they're reaching out to just those handful of companies. You're, I see your head, you're nodding your head, yes, you're, you're probably experiencing some inquiries coming directly to you. There's different options. It's an email saying, here's an opportunity. If you want to look at it, click on it, log in. But it's me, like it sends it right to you. They find you from me. Exactly. So you're, and many people think it's spam mm -hmm. because it's so odd that the government's proactively reaching out to you. So this, we're going to give you some insight today as to how to even fine tune it more so that they, they're not wasting your time and you're not wasting their time. So if you um, have, Kim, if you could let me know if folks are online, what kinds of companies or if they're asking questions as we're going through, I can take questions during the session and we can also take them at the end. It either way is fine. Happy to keep it live as we go through this. So let me give you an example of this artificial intelligence. Could you go to the next slide for me, please? Here we go. So this artificial intelligence is use now focusing on what you do for the federal government and how they can validate your experience, meaning your past performance. Because you know the government is a risk adverse creature. They don't want to take risk on working with a company who is new to business or has never done business with any other entity like corporate is past performance. It's fine to show past performance in other businesses or in the corporate marketplace or county government or state government or city government. It all does not need to be only federal government experience. And this is often an eye opener. Where is it? It's called Acquisition Gateway, and the website is noted up on the screen. And I'm going to show you a, that actual website in just a moment. But it is not for vendors to use. 
themselves. This is not a website that you as a vendor can sign into. This website is strictly for the government. In the header where it says Acquisition Gateway in the tan color, you can see where it says a workspace for acquisition professionals and federal buyers. The reason that we are showing you this website and this screenshot is I want you to know where this artificial intelligence tool resides. It's real. It's in place. It's being used every day. As we just heard uh, from our team member, is it Allison? Justine. Justine, sorry. Justine, thank you, here in the room. So this tool, where is it getting data from? Where are they finding you? This Let's get started with SAM.gov. And for those of you who already have a SAM registration, you need to pay attention to this because I'm going to tell you something that you know nothing about right now. SAM.gov is, yes, how you're paid. And every entity must be in SAM.gov, whether you're a Lockheed Martin or you're a one-person operation, Mr. Martin, you must be in SAM. And it gives you legal statements regarding your business. And one of the things that we cannot see here in the room, because the bar at the bottom, but let me tell you what it says. Don't worry about it because I got you covered. There's new fields in SAM where you will put keywords and phrases relating to the work that you provide. Now, the, the trick is to use, and not trick as in shady, the trick in being effective is to use the same keywords and phrases that the federal government customer uses. And I'm going to give you an example. We had a client that provided fencing, you know, like chain link, split rail, fencing. And they used to do a lot of it, millions of dollars of fencing around construction sites, around buildings, around permanent installations. And they saw their business going lower and lower and lower out of the federal government. But they could look around and they could see there were fencing around the various sites and they were not seeing those opportunities. And so they came to us and said, why is that happening? And we said, well, let us find out why that is happening. And so we did some research and we found that, yes, indeed, the government was not buying fencing anymore. They were buying secure perimeter systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Change the the word. Changing the key words and mm -hmm. phrases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what get right? Get what's the difference? So imagine, let's say, for instance, I, I know that this is not your focus market, but financial services. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, the federal government does contract with many organizations related specifically to financial services. So if you were providing financial services in the government's needs, health and human services would describe it one way. HIPAA compliant, they're, they're going to use very specific keywords and phrases related just to that. But if you're providing financial services for the Army Corps of Engineers, where it's construction focused, their keywords and phrases around the financial support services would be very different. And what you mentioned, Justine, earlier, when they need a secure space, those keywords and phrases would be very specific. Kim, if you could get me to yeah. that next one again. There we go. Sorry. So now what I would suggest you do, I'm going to go to the next screen and show you the place in SAM where you will put the keywords. Kim, if you could take me to the next screen, that would be fabulous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
there we go. It's new field and it's not well defined. So it's in the government and other points of contact. POC means point of contact. So in your SAM.gov registration, for every point of contact, you also have a notes, N-O-T-E-S field, where you would put keywords and phrases relating to the services and the products that you provide. This is free. There is no fee at all to be registered or to update this information in SAM.gov. If so there is a question in the chat, um, Kirsten would like to know if SAM.gov is a one time registration only, or does the company have to re register every year? Great question. And the fact is, you're mandated to re register every year, meaning just re up. You don't have to put in new information again. You just have to go there and validate all of the information that's there. Make sure the address is correct. Most importantly, make sure your points of contact are correct. The people, their names, titles, because, you know, people change jobs a lot. And your keywords are correct. That's mandated once a year. I will tell you, though, that if you go into your SAM.gov at least every 90 days, that's even better. Why? Because it bumps you up in the artificial intelligence searches because your record is more recent and, in their eyes, more accurate. Okay, and there's one more question. Um, Hazel's asking, um, she read where Sam would no longer be the system the federal government would use and it would be replaced by another entity. Is that true and can you explain that? Well, you're, you're kind of accurate, but that's old news <laughs> because it was called CCR. Dot gov and then it went to sam.gov and then this announcement came out and then it went to beta sam.gov and this has happened all over the last five years but now it is the system of record so sam.gov is now the bona fide system of record the federal government is only using this system to handle all of the registrations for federal entities and so you we have a, a newcomer who's uh, joined us tell us about your business sure my name is lisa ennis and um, i own a hair loss and hair replacement salon which is here in this building awesome um, we're not open yet and i um, also own beside it an events training center Great. And um, and that's new, added on to the business, and I'm excited. And I'm sorry I'm late. Um, unfortunately, Synergy is happening right now. So they're talking about other agencies um, that we should register with at the same time. Yes. So I left there, ran over here, and I have to go back there again. Uh, so multitasking. Any of it. Yes, multitasking. The, the multitasking yes. entrepreneur, it's our life, right? You need to clone yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Listen to you saying that. And yes. so, Lisa, when you see me looking down the cameras here, okay. so I just know that. Okay. No uh, very good. So you have a lot of reason to be here today as yes. well. Uh, and I'm definitely. newly registered. In SAM.gov. Um, not Sam yet. Okay. But I just became a um, MB, MBE. E. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. So, um, yes, this is all new for me and I, I'm excited to learn all of it. All of it. <laughs> fabulous. So all, all uh, certifications with a BE mm -hmm. at the end of it, that means business enterprise, whether it's MBE, DBE, ah. WBE, any of those are all effective at the state and local level. Okay. They are not effective at the federal level. Okay, got it. Okay, got then. It. So I'm doing it all. There you go. <laughs> We're doing it all, right? We're all here. <laughs> so this record in SAM.gov, as I mentioned, is free. 
if you happen to be at a website that's charging you money, $599 is what I'm hearing these days, you're at a spoof website. Oh. Do not pay them any money. They try to make themselves look like Sam.gov. It is uh, borderline illegal. And so the point is, it's free. Any .gov websites are all legitimate federal government websites, as long as it has .gov at the end. If it has something else, you'd be very wary and make sure you're at the right website. So where there's data scraping here at the SAM.gov website, that's not the only website. The other website, Kim, if you go to the next slide for me, would be SBA Profile. And the website is up at the top, the very first bullet, because it's a long one and dsbs.sba.gov, you see that .gov there, so it is legitimate with a slash at the end DSBS for dynamic small business search. This is only for small businesses. Again, it does not cost you anything. Once you're registered in SAM, you're automatically have a DSBS registration. You don't have to pay anybody anything for it. It is a critical marketing tool for you because it is only av available to small businesses. This is where you showcase your abilities, you list your experience, and the artificial intelligence tools that I was talking about do use this database to scrape for those keywords and phrases. The in red, you note that there are four fields for keywords and phrases. And I heard from Kim earlier that yes, everyone will get the slides. Oh, good. Yes, so we'll make sure and everyone will have these. As well as when you give Matt, your business card, we are going to pull a, a winner of the book so that you can take that home with you today as well. So these four fields for keywords and phrases, there, one is called non-federal government certifications, one is called capability narrative, another is called special equipment, and the fourth is called keywords. Matthew, here in the room, is going to volunteer to walk you through all of this, yes. <laughs> so if you email us, we will set up a complimentary time to chat with Matthew. He will walk you through how to do all of this on your own records. If you have any questions on this, we are going to do this as part of our support here for the Central Maryland Chamber of Commerce. And we're happy to do that for you because this is critical for you to position yourself to be found by those data scraping tools. But guess what? That's not the only ones. <laughs> for those of you who want to do business with NSA, oh. There's the ARC. Yep. That's the second bullet down here, NSA's ARC, Acquisition Resource Center. Every business who wants to do business right in your backyard, mm -hmm. right here in Central Maryland, Fort Meade is one of the biggest customers. Tens of billions of dollars are awarded every single year out of the over 50 agencies that are located right at Fort Meade. So not just NSA at Fort Meade, but 50 plus, I think maybe over 100 plus that are located at NSA. But they, every agency is now starting to develop its own database, as you were mentioning earlier, Lisa. So it's important if you want to target other agencies that you're also putting your registrations in again for free, no cost. And uh, another example I have up is Department of Treasury, where at the noted website, you see the Department of Treasury registration database. So every single one of the target agencies that you want to do business with may indeed now have their own registration. I call it their way to get connected with their favorite children, mm -hmm. you know, who they know, who they like, who they trust, who they want to do business with over and over and over again. 
So if you'd like us to walk you through how to do this, again, we're going to do it at no cost. Matthew will be happy to help you. Make sure if you're in the room that he has your card. And then Kim, if you'd be kind enough to share us with the us, the uh, registrants would be happy to offer that as well. Yes, ma'am. I'm just curious, if we didn't have you, how would we find out about this? And that is why our clients have won eight billion dollars because <laughs> they have us. <laughs> I, I get emails line. all the time, but I just didn't know what target.gov was. I did take a couple of the training classes online. There you go. Yes. So we are a consulting firm. Target.gov is a consulting firm. We are not the government. Okay. We, we are a consulting firm. It is target.gov.com. <laughs> so we, we are not .gov, it's targetgov.com. And we're here 25 years later. We've been in business 25 years. Awesome. We are here to help companies plan, position, pursue, and win federal contracts. And this is how. So we are knowledgeable about what's happening in the federal government marketplace. And let's talk about decision makers, who the people are that you want to reach out to before the RFP comes out. These are all of the people who will be involved in deciding who they contract with. So the federal government decision makers, there are essentially three layers of decision makers. And you don't want to start at the top. You know, this is where a lot of companies make a big mistake. They figure, I'm going to go to the director, or I'm going to go to the general or the admiral, and I'm going to talk directly to them, and they're going to help me win a contract. Why not? Or, or go to the president, you know, and I'm at the top. I started to the top. See, no, no, don't do that because they have no legal authority to award anything. Else. Oh, okay. The people who have the legal authority are the first layer up here: contracting and acquisition staff. Their acronyms are CO, KO, or CS. They have the legal authority to sign on the dotted line and to spend our tax dollars with other con contractors with businesses so they are really intent on doing this legally because you know they could go to jail hmm. if right. they most they, do they do no. not want to do that if they misappropriate funds they're serious very serious about staying out of jail whereas the program and technical managers the second group of people they cannot sign on the bottom line but if they need hotel space or IT services or they need training support or financial systems or construction, they're the ones that write what they need and they hand it to the contracting and acquisition professionals who put it into an RFP. They work hand in hand together. So the program and technical managers, they are the people who need to know you as well because you can help them shape the opportunity around what you do. So this is why you need to reach out to more than just contracting and acquisition, because they're buying everything. They're buying construction services and engineering services and hotel services and financial services, training services, workforce development services. So you also want to keep the third layer in mind, the small business representatives. Whether you're a large business like Lockheed or you're a small one-person operation, these are critical people to you. And they go by funny names, Ozdebu, Sadbu, mm -hmm. SBLO. These people are your liaisons into the federal government agencies. A lot of people think that, well, they don't buy anything. I'm just going to skip over them. They're kind of window dressing, and that could not be further than, from the truth. They are critical. They must get to know you in, in order to open up doors to the pro program managers and contracting officers. So these are very important people for you to start to get to know. If you're working with Fort Meade, they often have industry days. As a matter of fact, this morning, right before I came here, in the email, I got noticed that DISA, one of the largest agencies at Fort Meade, is having an industry day coming up in November. And um, it is limited to two people per company to attend in person. And 
you can send as many as you want to attend virtually. They're going to do it uh, just like you're doing this, mm -hmm. both in person and virtually as well. So every agency will have industry days where they're reaching out to contractors to talk to you, to have you meet with all of these decision makers. It really is worth your time and effort in going to these industry days. And then marketing to the decision makers. Kim, if you go to the next slide, that'd be fabulous. We do have a question from Kirsten. Um, how do you find out about Fort Meade industry days? I'm sure you're on the, the major mailing list for everyone because they want to get the information out to you. Yes. Yeah, so first thing to do is sign up for our, our Target Gov newsletter, which is free at targetgov.com. And it's right on the home page. Click the link at the top, just your name and email. That's it. It's simple to sign up. We don't ask for anything else. And then we send out a newsletter twice a month and we'll have notices of what's coming up so that you can hear about all of these wonderful events. And that might be something the Central Maryland Chamber would get tapped into in the yeah. future when yeah, you start yeah. your GovCon group. Mm -hmm. That would be very helpful, I'm sure. So marketing yourself is very critical, and most companies have no clue how to effectively market yourself, how to reach out, how to be proactive. So it's more than just answering our fees. You want to drive business to you by proactive marketing. You know, make sure your website is accurate and up to date, and your email is not Gmail, it's not Outlook, it's not Verizon, it's none of those Yahoo's or even AOL.com for you old timers. Make sure you're you're laughing because you know a lot of people are using them. Yes, because that just does not look professional. It makes you look like a, a very uh, fly by night organization or, or company and the government will not do business if you look risky. So make sure your email has your website domain name in it. Your name at your company name dot com or dot whatever it is. Know the next few bullets about knowing your niche, your strengths, your expertise, all means you don't want to be all things to all people. You want to prove what you can do. You want to have past performance, experience, proving that you can do what you say you can do. That is the key to success, is how do you get that across to decision makers that I've done this before. You're not taking a risk in doing this with me. That's how you want to frame your proactive marketing processes. Yes, ma'am. I have ma a question. So suppose you're new in it like me, um, how to, and you don't have any past performance. What's a, what's a good, um, you know, how do you get attention when you're new at it? Um, what, what do you, what's it a can be to, done. It can be done. It can be done. The, in the book, we actually start with a story of a company who was in exactly the same situation. Okay. And we helped them win a $7 million Air Force contract, win their first year in business with zero uh, experience. But it means you do have to know how to get through that maze. And ideally, you're, you're communicating what your expertise is. Okay what you bring to the table, why you're doing what you're doing. You know, did you work somewhere else where you gain that expertise and now you're starting your own business? Mm -hmm. That kind of scenario can help you get started. And Matthew would be happy to chat with you after today mm -hmm. to help you understand how to position your company to be that go-to company. Okay, testimony. Any testimony? Yes, yes, indeed. So you want to mitigate risk in doing business with you, and that's generally by having numbers, metrics. So if, for instance, from a, a training standpoint, how many people have you trained? How many courses have you developed? How many companies or organizations, nonprofits have benefited by what you do. That can be proof. On hotels, wow, you've got some great metrics. How many nights, how many people, how many 
meetings, but how many people attended those meetings. When you break it down to all of those metrics where you could prove to them in the last year, we've had meetings for over 50,000 people. Because when you add up, you know, 200, 500, 50, 25, you're going to come up with a big number. And then when you say in five years, we've had a bigger number. Ten, so the more you can prove what you can do, you say you can do with metrics, the more comfortable the government feels in doing business with you. And then you want to reach out and market every single month. Definitely. And let's go to our next slide. This is a secret that you can start using right away. Okay. And it's a format for a matchmaking pitch. What is a matchmaking pitch? Well, you might think of it as an elevator pitch. But in the federal government, when you go to these meetings that Fort Meade has, or that DISA has, or Health and Human Services has, they will actually have something called a matchmaking opportunity where it's like speed dating for contractors, uh -huh. literally. Tables set up in the room. You could, I know that when Fort Meade does it, they have over 50 tables with different organizations and different decision makers at each table. And at those tables, you will sit one-on-one -on -one and you will have 10 to 12 minutes to talk about your company, what you do, where you fit within their organization's needs. Many people stumble and they don't know how to say what they need to say at these kinds of meetings. This gives you a basic format. If you work those six sentences into your pitch, you can say all of that within 90 seconds and get started with the meeting you'll have some very substantive conversation when you start it off this way, as opposed to sitting down and saying, how about that game last Sunday? The Ravens were terrible. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. And don't talk you're about the weather. Your time. You're wasting your time exactly. Away. They don't care about that night at that moment. They do. You, you hit the nail on the head. If you start off, it, with these six sentences, you will start off much more professionally, focused in on the services and products you provide, and be very successful in getting something out of this event called a matchmaking session. So, Gloria, I have a question. So, does Target Go help companies develop these matchmaking pitches? Yes, as a matter of fact, we are often conducting a matchmaking or elevator contest at the various conferences. We yeah, just did one. That's what I see all the time. Yeah. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. We just did one at the National Hub Zone Conference, which was in Chantilly. We uh, do one at the National 8A Conference. We've done it for the National Veterans Conference. So this is really something that we are experts at doing. Let's talk about one of your other tools, the business cards. You know, a lot of folks aren't carrying business cards anymore. They're, they're using phones and they're, you. yep, yep. Well, you're not going to be successful in the federal government marketplace if you don't have something that your person you're meeting with can hold and can write on. So I do have, a, well, I do, yes. I have a question. I have a thought. I have a question. I'm old school, so I carry business cards, I'm going to run down the hall and get one for you. However, I'm noticing that a lot of the um, younger businesses don't, you know, they don't carry cards. Um, and I'm glad you said that it's important to have them. So, um, so I, I feel great about, um, <laughs> I feel great about um, carrying cards. I feel great about that. But how do you, how do you, um, how do you handle when, when you're trying to exchange business cards and someone just says, here, take a picture of mine? Well, Your suggestions. my suggestion is take a picture, but now what's happened is there's no connection. There's no personal connection. It, it, relying on a, 
on a device, on an electric device, electronic device to make a personal connection is not successful. Also, if you go to the expense, when you go to the expense of printing business cards, make sure they're not shiny. They're not dark. Because if they're shiny, you can't yeah. write on them. Right. Yes. Pens don't work. Pens don't work. If they're dark, when you write on them, you can't read them. I uh, know. So now everybody's thinking, uh-oh, what do <laughs> I do? Yes, indeed. So the reason that this is important, let's say, for instance, you've gone to a matchmaking pitch and you're they're, they're saying, um, I want your capability statement and your business card. And you say, well, here, I'll just give you my LinkedIn. They're not going to contact you through LinkedIn. It's useless. It's absolutely useless. You just, honestly, what you did was you put a big old L right on your forehead because you don't understand the customer and what the customer is asking for. They're asking for two specific things, your business card and your capability statement. So what we are going to do right on the screen, uh, and you're going to get the the actual PowerPoint, we tell you everything that should be on your business card, and there's a lot of information there. Should have your SAM UEI number, your DUNS number, your CAGE code, your NAICS code, your PSC, your certifications, your contract vehicles. Use both sides, not so just one side. To, you're going to have to use both sides because there's no way all that information will fit on there. It should be like a mini capability okay. statement. Okay. So action step is update your business card and your email signature. Capability statement is the other critical document that you must have. And this is mandatory in the federal government marketplace. If you're not in the marketplace, you don't even know what a capability statement is. We are going to give you a complimentary guide. And we are going to show you the exact content that needs to be in this capability statement. It's not pretty. The guide that we're giving you is black and white because it's focused on content. How do you describe your, your company is going to be different than how you describe your company. So the content is critical. We even have webinars that you can get on demand on how to create your own capability statement. We have templates for you, but we're going to give you a complimentary guide. And it will be one side of one page, and it'll be in a PDF format that we are going to email you. Uh, if Matthew has your business card here in the room, we'll make sure and get you that. And then Kim will give us the connection for everybody online. If, absolutely, if you are listening to this as a recording and you said, well, I just lost out on that. No, you did not. Because what we will do if you just email here at the chamber, I'm sure they'll forward the emails to us, or you can certainly send them directly to us. And at the last slide, we'll have our email address. And we'll send uh, your emails also out to all the attendees. Awesome. And if you're smart enough to listen to this as a recording later on, yeah. and it's maybe two o'clock in the morning because you can't sleep, you too. Just shoot us an email <laughs> and we will make sure and get that information to you. Okay, we do have a question from the chat. Um, so Shay is saying a, full, a recent full service government contracting firm reached out to her and said they can assist her company obtain contracts for $7,500. Is this an average cost for these type of services? They said it takes around 300 hours to obtain a contract. Sorry, I have to go down. Um, to obtain a contract, and the GSA schedule form is around 500 pages, which they assist with completing. So I'm going to say red flag, red flag, red flag, <laughs> all over the place. First of all, the first I'd ask you to do is take a look where that company is located and if it happens to be in the state of Florida I would be very concerned because there's a group of shady companies operating out of the state of Florida that do this kind of marketing. Uh, happy to talk to you offline about that mm -hmm. to make sure that it's a legitimate company. Yes because mm -hmm. those, what they're talking about is a GSA schedule contract. 
that's what they're focusing on is misleading they're not telling you exactly what it is and even if your company should have a GSA schedule so we're happy to give you uh, the insight on that again Matthew would be a great person to talk to uh, we'll have our email at the end of the slide deck so that you can reach out to us and would be happy to go into more detail in Massachusetts. Middleton. Uh, well, that's interesting. In Massachusetts, and why are they focused on the federal government? So that would <laughs> be, the first thing I'd do is take a look. Do they, okay, they may be totally legitimate. How I determine that is to see if there's a, about us and is there a real person who's running this organization? Do they have a, a name, an address? Can you check them in SAM.gov? Are they legitimate? Uh, before you pay anybody any any money about this. I would not do this until I know, A, is a GSA schedule even appropriate for your company uh, based on the services you're offering or the products you're selling or the targets you're going after. Because the government uses many different contract vehicles and a GSA schedule is not always the one that is best for you. So be very, very, very careful on that. And then to wrap up today, if we have some action steps for you based on all of the information that I've covered so far, email us through the email you'll get in just a minute and we'll give you all of the information that's promised and you can schedule time with Matthew for a complimentary review of your SAM and your SBA profiles. If you're already registered, Matthew will go over them with you and let you know how to update them for free. That's normally a chargeable service for us, um, but we will give this to you at no cost because of your affiliation with the Central Maryland Chamber of Commerce. And then we have free videos. Advanced Tactics, Making the Leap from Sub to Prime, all of those videos are accessible to you. Update your SAM and your SBA profiles immediately based on everything we've told you about keywords. If you don't have a SAM and SBA profile, reach out to us, we'd be happy to chat with you about them. Update your email signature. Make sure your email signature has every single thing in it that we had listed on your business card. Same thing in your email signature, reply as well as original. That's what they wanna see, everything that they need to know right there. Your business card should now be two-sided, update your CAPE statement, your website with all of the information. And if you're a cutting edge company, maybe IT services, engineering services, maybe you're in research and development, using case studies and white papers can be very important for you as well. So we're just about ready to wrap up and uh, our handouts will include the session slides as well as the access to the videos and the capability statement guide. I know Sharon from our team is listening to us. Sorry, Sharon, I should have told you that earlier, <laughs> but you'll have the uh, capability statement guide as one of the handouts as well that we'll send you. So the email's easy, it's fast, F-A-S-T, at targetgov.com and we'll take good care of you at that email address and then now happy to spend whatever time you'd like uh, on the next slide let's see what we have our fast process this is where we help companies win billions of dollars in federal contracts this is our consulting service or for those of you who are very new to the federal government marketplace our kickstart consulting program will help you get started uh, in a very affordable market entry consulting process. And for those of you on the next slide who want to have us handle the marketing process for you, we have Hand It Over to Us, where we do all of the content for your marketing to the federal government marketplace. Now, happy to go to the mm -hmm. question slide. Yes. Uh, Gloria, I, I want to thank both you and Matthew for being here. This is probably one of, if not the best, um, educational workshops I, I have been to. Thank you. Um, just incredible. Uh, 
one thing that you motivate motivated me to do is now get business cards. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Uh, and a quick plug to another chamber member, Andy, at Minuteman Press. He actually showed me the last time I had seen him a two-sided business card, mm -hmm. and on that business card there was a place to take notes. Love it. Wow. So. I know we, him. Yep. He's all over the place. All over the all place. Over. Yes, he <laughs> so is, I'm going to reach out to Andy <laughs> in order to get new business cards. But what, what's also sort of enlightening, last year we had a pretty large government agency reach out to us out of the blue to inquire about our financial wellness education workshops. Interesting. I don't know how they found us because we are not listed on any of the websites. Mm -hmm. um, we thought it was a hoax or a scam. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, they reached out to us because we do this for very large corporations and they wanted to consider us coming in to, yeah. So um, this was very enlightening. So yeah, they right. found you through those artificial intelligence data scraping tools, even without mm -hmm. SAM and SBA, mm -hmm. they're scraping websites. They're scraping, it, they can scrape videos. It yeah. is stunning how, um, we were actually involved with the creator of this, the guy who architected this whole process uh, from the very beginning. So that's why we live, eat and breathe this now. Mm -hmm. I, I had a question as well. On one of the slides, you took the program and technical managers, um, those abbreviations. Um, what did, why were they so different? OSDBU and SAB, what does that stand for? Like, Office, uh, OSDBU, OSDB. Uh, yes, yes. Welcome to the world of acronyms. I was going to say it's the government. They've got an acronym yes. for everything. What was all that? It stands for. Degree. Oh, Office wow. of Small and Disadvantaged Business mm -hmm. Utilization. Thank you. There you go. Wow. In the back, in the back of the book, we that is such a common thing. We have a, a, a description, a glossary, and an acronym list of all of these different things. So Thank that you. there you go. You do learn a new language. Yes. Thank you. Does anyone have a question online? Feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question. We have just a few more moments. And great job, by the way. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. All right, hearing none. Christy, do you have any final comments? Yes, I do. Thanks, Kim. Um, thank you to all of our guests for joining us today. And a huge thank you to Gloria for sharing her knowledge with us. Um, and we do hope you'll tune in for some future webinars and other events. Our schedule can be found on our website, which is centralmarylandchamber.org. And as mentioned, we will share a link to the video of our session today, uh, Gloria's contact information, the slideshow and other documents as well as the attendee contact information. So hopefully we'll be able to get that out to you this afternoon. So thank you again for attending and thank you to Gloria Larkin and her team at Target Gov. We hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks. <laughs>